A couple of years ago, EV enthusiasts looking to go off-road were graced with an electric vehicle startup company called Rivian. Now, Rivian originally launched in the U.S. with two models, the R1T pickup truck and this vehicle here, the R1S three-row large SUV. So this thing here starts at around $75,000 and it is a full-size flagship style SUV. But not everybody needs a vehicle this big or this expensive, which is why I'm out here in the meat packing district at the Rivian space here in New York City, taking a look at the company's latest entry. This right here is the brand new 2026 Rivian R2. It's a mid-size crossover SUV with two rows and it starts at around $45,000. So now that we're finally seeing the new R2 in person, let's go ahead and take a first look. So as impressive as the Rivian R1T and R1S is, not everybody, like I said earlier, can afford a vehicle that starts at around $75,000. So this model here, the R2, is a very important new addition to the Rivian family because this is built off of a new electric vehicle architecture that's significantly smaller. But looking at the styling of this vehicle, some of you may actually confuse this thing for the R1S because it practically looks the same. I mean, Rivian has kind of you know built up this front end and it's kind of instantly recognizable as a Rivian. You can see all models are gonna come standard with their kind of full LED light blade where you have that LED signature going across the entire front fascia. You have this kind of oval shape to the full LED headlights. Unlike the R1T and R1S, however, you can see there are three individual LEDs here as opposed to four. I also noticed that Rivian kind of got rid of the fog lights. You still have these big, uh, easy access tow hooks, of course, and then the front bumper is slightly different. But overall, I really love the way that this car looks. I mean, I love the way the Rivian R1T and the R1S looks, and this essentially basically looks like that vehicle, but you really don't get a sense of how much smaller this vehicle is until you actually see one in person. Now, I'll have to open up the frunk and show you guys the cargo area in a, in a separate clip, but moving around the side, side profile, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the size and the dimensions of this vehicle. Now, Rivian, I love the fact that they launched, of course, with a pickup truck and an SUV. And this model here has the same boxy proportions that, again, really works. This, is, this styling trend is very in, it's very rugged, it's very masculine. But what you probably don't, didn't realize is the fact that how much smaller the R2 is compared to the R1S. So at 185.6 inches long, this is around 15 inches shorter versus the R1S. So this is about the same size as the Tesla Model Y. Uh, for example, its height is around 67 inches. It's around 75 inches wide. Rivian says that this is around seven inches narrower and around 10 inches lower versus the R1S. So it's a big difference. You can see this particular model that I'm showing you here has a 21 inch newly designed wheel uh, on a 275 by 45 R21 inch tire. I love the way these wheels look. Uh, you can probably tell that this model here also has the tri-electric motors because it has the yellow painted calipers, the yellow accents. Typically Rivian will put the yellow accents if you guys are looking at one of their performance models. Unlike the R1S, however, the R2 has a fixed suspension. So Rivian says this model is gonna have just under 10 inches of ground clearance, which is still plenty of actual clearance if you plan to go off-roading. I also like the fact that they're unpainting the little side trim molding around here. That's again, gonna add to the whole rugged theme. Uh, and then if you come around the rest of the profile here, you can see the roof has a two-tone look. Above me here, you guys probably noticed this massive roof tent. Of course, Rivian has made a name for themselves for being outdoorsy, going off-road. And this roof tent here is huge. It can probably easily fit uh, three people inside. It's got these accessory roof rails on the roof. It also has a panoramic glass roof, although that doesn't actually open up to vent air, but it's gonna help you get a little bit more light uh, inside the cabin. We'll talk about that later on. I also noticed this one being a very early pre-production model. The windows back here aren't tinted. I suspect they will be on the production car. And then over here, the rest of the profile, you can see it's just very clean. It's very boxy. It's very rugged. And I think Rivian really much, pretty much nailed the design. Now looking at the back of the vehicle, you can see it looks pretty much like the R one uh, S, although there are a couple of differences we'll touch on in a moment. You can see over here, I can't open this right now, but this is actually the door that conceals the charge port. Uh, this vehicle, when it ships in 2026, will actually, it will already have the NAC plug. So this will already be able to go to Tesla superchargers. It'll have that newer North American standard plug as opposed to the J1772. And then looking at the rear, you can see it has that signature LED light blade going across. It's boldly spells out Rivian at the back. It says R2 over here, which I am curious to know why Rivian decided to call it R2 as opposed to R2S. The company didn't really have an answer for me when I asked. Uh, really, they just wanted to remind us that this is built on a, off of a different electric vehicle architecture versus the one that's on the R1S uh, and R1T. Now this rear window also slides down uh, just like a Toyota Foreigner or a Toyota Tundra, which I think is a great feature. A lot of SUVs don't have that. Uh, but overall, let me know what you guys think of the styling. Again, this may look like an R1S, uh, when you just kind of look at it in pictures, but I assure you it is significantly smaller and it has its own uh, vibe to it. 
So originally I wanted to open up this tailgate, but Rivian actually asked me not to because this is a very early pre-production vehicle, but they did actually roll down the back window. So as you can see, this is a pretty unique feature that a lot of Toyota 4Runner owners really love. So I love to see the fact that Rivian offers that here. You can see there's this little shelf here, and this is actually a little flip out table that pops out that you can flip open when the tailgate or when the glass is actually down. This allows you to kind of put items here, whatever you'd like if you're camping, maybe put your keys, your wallets here. Uh, there's also this little, uh, area right here, if you touch that, if you have the key fob on you, this actually allows you to uh, roll the window down uh, basically with a capacitive touch button, uh, which is again, a pretty great feature. The tailgate itself, unlike the R1S, uh, which is a split tailgate design, this actually opens up in one piece. And as you can see here, if you wanna put this down, it basically, flips right down. Now, I can't talk about the cargo figures just yet, but I can at least show you. Um, the R1S is one of the largest in terms of the space, but you can see because of the skateboard battery pack, it has a pretty nice load floor. Uh, I'd, I'd probably estimate this will have in the 70, 60 uh, cubic feet range whenever Rivian has those actual specs uh, for us. Now, let's go ahead and go back to the front of the vehicle because I originally wanted to open up the front trunk of this vehicle, but Rivian said that, uh, unfortunately, that they can't open up the hood at this time. Uh, so we're, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs because this this vehicle, when it launches in 20, early 2026, will be available in two different battery packs. Basically a standard battery pack, which is the base battery, and then a large battery pack. Now, the company said that you'll also be able to choose between a single motor rear wheel drive, so you can actually get a two wheel drive version of this vehicle, a dual motor all wheel drive, and the performance model, which is likely this model that I'm showing you here, is the tri-motor all wheel drive system. Now, the company wasn't ready to talk about um, horsepower figures just yet, but they did say that the uh, single motor with the large battery pack should be able to go over 300 miles of range, uh, while the tri-motor all-wheel drive version should be able to do zero to 60 in under three seconds. So Rivian, again, has made a name for itself for offering these you know, off-road adventure SUVs and trucks, but they're also able to go quick as hell when you actually get them out on the road. So we managed to get the tailgate open, and I wanted to talk about some of the unique features back here, which again, the space is plentiful. That's with the actual seats down. I don't have final cargo figures to get just yet, but the cool thing about the R2 is you can actually fold flat the, the two front pa the two seats in the front. So the driver's seat will fold flat along with the passenger seat. That basically allows you to put a bed you know, lying flat in the cabin. So if you guys don't wanna use the roof tent, you can put a bed in here and sleep inside the car, which is a big thing. Again, that's going to really increase the practicality, especially if you guys are camping. The other great thing about being an electric vehicle, if I lift this up, you can see there's a massive underfloor storage area. That's really great for you know, storing the charge port cable, any other things you wanna kinda of hide from prying eyes. There's also a couple of other, you know, cool Easter eggs here. You can see you can fold the seats from here via this button, open this up. You can see there are two charge, or there's a two USB-C plugs, uh, an actual household power outlet. No air compressor though, because remember this doesn't have the air suspension that you get in the R1S. There's also these really nice little uh, sturdy tie down hooks if you guys want to put like a cargo net over here. And then these side windows, as you can see, they don't roll down, but they do pop open to actually vent air. So again, Rivian wants you to kind of have that adventure lifestyle with the roll down windows and the pop down windows. But overall, again, if you plan to use this as like a family car, the R2 definitely offers the space. So moving on to the interior of this 2026 Rivian R2. First of all, if you guys have been inside the R1T or the R1S, this is gonna feel pretty familiar, but Rivian has made some updates here, you know, to kind of give the R2 its own unique character and also address a couple of concerns and complaints that owners uh, and consumers uh, have had uh, with the original models. Now, first of all, as I get inside this vehicle, it has kind of like an open and airy feel. I love the way how the dash is nice and low. It allows for good visibility. The seats are also very comfortable. These seats are pretty similar to what we've seen in the R1S and the R1T. They kind of have this really cool like Rivian branding and the actual seat back themselves. I love the two-tone color. And look, these seats are power adjustable and they also are heated and ventilated, which again, really upscale touch. It's what we exactly expect from Rivian. And I have to say for a new startup company, uh, the company really shocked me. When I had a chance to actually drive an R1T uh, a couple of months ago, I borrowed one from a friend. I was impressed with the build quality considering how new this brand is. In terms of the door panel materials, you can see this model is early pre-production, but it has beautiful uh, stitching with real stitching across the upper portion with the two-tone leather. You kind of have like this fabric as well in the actual door panels. You have a button that actually opens up the doors. You have these really nice high quality window switch controls, which as you can see are also nicely illuminated. Rivian asked me not to open up these doors because again, very early pre-production vehicle, so the doors are gonna have to stay open. And then looking at the rest of the, the dashboard here, you can see there's beautiful leather stitching going across 
across the same material on the seats. I love this, you know, matte finish wood trim, which looks and smells and feels real. More of that fabric going across here. And then as you can see over here, as I get to the steering wheel, it is a new steering wheel. So it has a flat bottom and a flat topped design, and it has these new haptic controls. So these controls, they actually provide haptic feedback. So if I start moving the left one here, you can see that's for the volume. If I click this over to the right, I can actually adjust the actual screen there. This is the information display uh, that's behind the driver. And, and what I also notice is when I start moving this click wheel, it actually changes the haptic feedback amount. So in this mode, when I'm trying to cycle between that, it has slightly more or a different spacing between the haptic feedback. If I go back to the audio, it'll actually change the haptic feedback. Over here, this allows me to change the drive mode selector. Uh, so again, this like additional feature is a really nice touch. I also love the leather stitching here, the air, leather stitching over the airbag cover. And then of course, going over here to the center screen, this is where uh, we have that 15.6 inch uh, center touchscreen. So this is running L Rivian's latest software. It's an Android based uh, system. It doesn't, it still doesn't have Apple Car wireless Apple CarPlay or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in general, but you can see the graphics are fantastic. It has some you know unique software changes to show that this is the uh, R2 obviously. And I have to say for a pre-production vehicle, um, the screen looks fantastic, but we're gonna have to wait until we you know, see a closer to a production model you can, uh, to actually see what it's like to use. But you can see, look at that, that's literally almost almost like a video game. You can change the ride quality, the regen braking, the stability control and whatnot. You can access the charging over here. You can access the GPS function uh, and you can also turn on the heated and cool seats with the dual zone climate control function. And then before we get into the back seat, I actually do want to show you guys how to open up the glove box. I thought it was power actuated, but you just kind of push on that right in the center. You can see there it opens up. You have two massive glove boxes. So that's really nice for hidden storage. And then I also thought that this was going to be a speaker. However, just push that in, you can see it's actually a slide out drawer. Now Rivian said that they're not sure if this is going to be the final production spec, but again, if you guys are looking for more hidden storage, it's clear that Rivian was thinking about that. So let's go ahead and hop into the back seat area because even though this vehicle is around 15 inches smaller versus the R1S, this is where, you know, Rivian was very space efficient back here. Now I don't have final legroom figures just yet, but as you can see, this is pretty much where I'd have the seat to drive. In terms of the legroom space, I'd probably say this is around 38 inches perhaps. I love the fact that it has the completely flat floor that allows for, you know, a middle seat passenger to get back here. You have rear seat air vents back here. You have two USB-C charging ports. You have two storage or map pockets over here. The uh, uh, door panel materials back here are also pretty much the same as what you get from the front with the leather stitching everywhere. These seats, they do fold down. Uh, like I showed you earlier. And then if you guys, you know, like to only have two people back here, there's a center armrest that folds down with two cup holders, a little bit of storage. But uh, in terms of the headroom space, you can see even with the glass roof at five foot seven, I still have plenty of headroom. But if you guys are over six feet, it could feel a little bit tighter because remember this vehicle is around 10 inches lower versus the R1S. But overall, if you, you know, are looking to buy this as a family vehicle, you don't need the, the uh, third row. The second row of this vehicle should be able to accommodate adults. So before we close out this video, I'm going to actually start by showing you guys the tent up here because how could I not mention this awesome roof tent, which Rivian also just recently announced. It should eventually be available on the R1S as well. But this tent, Rivian says, should be able to hold two people, maybe three. You can see I'm sitting up here and it feels very nice. The roof camping tent thing is very much a thing. I actually want to borrow the camera from Rob because there's a really cool feature with this tent. Because this is an electric vehicle, you can see over here on this side, there's actually air vents that basically allow the tent to connect to the car's electrical system. There's USB plugs. There's also ambient lighting. This right here is a screen where you can actually project movies. And as you can see, that's just a really cool feature uh, that I think is going to kind of elevate camping into kind of like a glamping style. Now, let me see if I can gracefully get down here without falling and hurting myself. Now, as I come down from up here, let's go ahead and talk about availability of the R2 because this vehicle is definitely going to be a much more affordable car when it goes on sale. Unfortunately, you're going to have to wait almost two years because Rivian says that while order banks are open now, you can basically go to the website and reserve one for about a hundred bucks. This car will start at around $45,000. That's basically all they said for now. Uh, we have no idea what the actual price is going to be for something like this model here, the tri-motor tri version. So all we can do is technically speculate. I'm going to say that, you know, with the base version, the rear drive and this, uh, the standard battery pack will probably be around 45. If you guys want the tri-motor version with the large battery 
battery pack. I'd say that it'll probably top out where the R1S is going to actually start. So maybe in the $70,000 range, which again, I think is pretty reasonable. Obviously it's gonna be more expensive versus something like a Tesla Model Y or like a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Hyundai Ioniq 5. But what Rivian again offers is the promise of adventure. You have the you know super quick acceleration, you have the spacious interior, you have the great tech, you have that roof tent, which is just awesome. No other EV in the segment I think really offers that. And I think when this vehicle eventually does go on sale, it's really going to show you know the industry that Rivian is here to stay because again, they are a new electric vehicle company, but I think the company also did things right by introducing an SUV and a truck first. So Redline Reviews here, uh, here in New York City at the Rivian Space. I'm SoCon Bay.